Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Janice. If you're new here, today's video, I'm going to provide an update to one of my most popular videos here on YouTube. A lot of you have found me through that. That was how I cleared my eczema around my eyes. Yes, I say eczema. You can pronounce it eczema. Um, I'm Canadian, so maybe that's a Canadian thing. We say eczema. Anyway, so a lot of you message me through Instagram, YouTube, or even have emailed me over the years and you're desperate that you need help. And unfortunately, I can't respond to everybody. Everybody's body is so different. Also, I just wanted to say from working in dentistry most of my life, um, doing a thorough medical history is so, so important. So never get annoyed if you know you have pages to fill out when you go to a new healthcare provider, because that's very, very important. We gather a lot of information that way. So if someone just writes me a question on Instagram or emails, I, I can't necessarily answer that for you. I'm not a doctor. Not that that really means anything because I've been to lots of doctors who know nothing about this. I don't say that to be a know-it-all by any means, but when you've suffered with something, you yourself has probably done the most amount of research. You know, a doctor can't be a master of all, right? I am very passionate about healing yourself naturally, if you can do so, and getting to the root cause of illness. So you really have to tap into your intuition. I would really encourage everyone to do that. If you feel something is off or wrong in your body, if your body is sending you smoke signals, so to say, you really have to listen to that. You can't be lazy. You have to read. You have to do the research, watch things online, listen to podcasts, get to the bottom of your health because no one will care more than you. Also, I feel if you're watching this video, you already know this, but I'll just throw it out there. Um, I'm not gonna go down this rabbit hole, but natural cures are often suppressed, you know, when you're doing a Google search, okay? So you really have to dive deep. I find a lot of times what's helped me is sometimes I'll watch a YouTube video and I scroll through the comments and someone even in the comments section says something that resonates with me or they might suggest a book. So really, you know, don't take no for an answer do a deep dive you owe it to yourself to figure out your health because no one cares about your own health more than yourself okay and it doesn't matter how much money you make if you don't have your health you have nothing health is wealth right so with that being said i wanted to share with you what i feel has helped me the most keeping my eczema away for over seven and a half years now so i cannot believe it that i have not even had one flare-up in over seven years now that is insane to me in the past you can watch my videos i will link them all down below i think in the past the most my eczema would ever go away was maybe for a two-week period and like i said it was always localized to around my eyes so the number one thing that I believe that you can do for your health, especially if you're suffering from any sort of digestive issue, skin condition, any sort of chronic illness is go for a colonic. If you're unfamiliar what a colonic is or colonic irrigation, I'm going to link a video that I made in the past. Also, a video that I watched years ago by Andreas Moritz really convinced me to go. He talks about the history of colonic irrigation going back thousands of years. Also, I believe in this video, he stated that in Israel, um, up until maybe a certain point, I'm not sure if they do this anymore, they would not treat any sort of chronic illness unless the patient can prove that they've went through colonic irrigation. A lot of disease and chronic illness starts in your gut. So if that's not healthy, how are you supposed to heal? your skin or other ailments that you might have so it's kind of like that analogy you won't paint over a dirty wall right for example if you're gonna paint the hallway in your house and there's mud all over the wall you're gonna wash the mud off first before you do the painting right so that's essentially what this is you want to start with a clean slate even before you change your diet if you can go to a place that offers the angel of water colonics, I would highly recommend that. Um, even if you have to travel to a city, if you have to fly to a city, I think it's that important that you do this. If you don't have access to that, you can perform at home enemas. Although in my experience, they don't work very well for me. Other people have had good results or I can recommend a product Andreas recommended in one of his books, Colason, and also just to take magnesium too. The first time I ever went, I was absolutely shocked what I saw leave my body. I saw parasites come out. I, I honestly couldn't believe it. It was actually a little bit traumatic when I'm thinking back, but now if I go for a colonic, I actually find it, it's quite enjoyable and you feel very good, but I will say the first few times I went, I felt quite sick and very tired after. I think I was just detoxing so much bad stuff from my body, but really it I think it saved my life. I believe I had a candida overgrowth and I, I would just really encourage you to do that. 
So that is by far my number one tip. If you literally want to heal any sort of ailment in your body, even if you just want to lose weight or just to be overall healthy in a preventative way, I cannot tell you how many family members and friends I've recommended this to. They've went, I've had people on Instagram message me from around the world and the things that have come out of their body that they've told me about, I'm actually in shock i cannot believe it so thank you so much for andreas moritz he's now since passed away but if it were not for his videos and books i really don't know where my health would be right now so the second thing that i think is super important is removing inflammatory foods from your diet so you might be thinking well what are inflammatory foods unfortunately because of everybody's unique body chemistry, inflammatory foods are different for everybody. I would say in general, a lot of people have a little bit of a adverse reaction to having a lot of dairy, um, you know, inflammatory oils, processed sugars, things like that, um, gluten. You know, I would also be mindful how much meat that you're eating. In previous videos, I've talked about a book that really helped me and she has a few different books. It's called The Plan. I'll put it up here on the screen. Something that I found very interesting that helped me in her book was she has a list of what she calls devil foods and I'm gonna pop it up here on the screen and I'll provide a link down below. So a lot of healthy foods she found with her patients were causing inflammation. So you can see on this chart, even things like salmon, asparagus, Greek yogurt, oats, all things that my previous trainers would tell me to eat a lot of. Yes, I used to be very big into working out. And to be honest, you know, when I think of the times I was the most fit, I actually, I think had the most inflammation and bloating going on in my body. So you can see by this chart that it's not necessarily just junk food that causes inflammation. It can be things like this. So counting calories is not necessarily the end all be all type of thing. Yes, that can maybe help you if you have a lot of weight to lose, but if you're kind of like me and always, you know, could maybe lose just 10 pounds, that last 10 pounds, this sort of thing will really help you. I think in the past I was definitely overeating eggs and uh, dairy products such as like whey protein powder yogurts things like that so i actually did eat a completely vegan diet for five years or maybe a little over five years i will say maybe right before COVID, i started having a little bit of dairy just because i find it's very hard to avoid and my skin was still okay and then i will say over COVID, i just had this feeling that i needed to eat a little bit of meat again i still don't eat very much of us neither one of us do here i will say a lot of days we still eat completely plant-based but i kind of just eat a normal well-balanced diet i don't eat too many animals products i think for the most part we do like to eat very healthy at home and we've been traveling a lot this year so of course when i'm out traveling i'm gonna try desserts and unique foods that i can't necessarily try here but my skin has still been perfectly fine so often when you eliminate foods from your diet and let your body heal you can reintroduce them slowly at a later date but you sometimes have to eliminate them for quite some time i would say maybe give yourself a challenge and eliminate a certain food or you know maybe you want to eat a whole food plant-based diet for one month and just see how you feel that's the challenge i gave to myself and my skin really cleared up so i just kept going with it i felt better so i just kept with it okay so the third thing that i really think helped my skin was that i did the amazing liver and gallbladder flush multiple times i've made lots of videos here on youtube i will link them down below so again this is a protocol by andreas moritz i followed everything in his book to the t and i was just amazed so often due to the things that we eat or that we're exposed to we're putting on our skin things like that our liver over time it's not functioning how it's intended to it's not like in its optimal state so basically this protocol helps rejuvenate your liver and makes it perform how it's intended to and it can relieve a lot of ailments so I, again i don't want to make this video too long you can go watch my videos on that but i think that that is great okay and a few other things i wanted to mention that could be causing your skin condition so i only really know about this because i worked in the dental field so if you are a mouth breather i've made videos on this in the past i'm going to link them down below that can help you if you're a mouth breather unfortunately you're going to be prone to a slew of health conditions so it can severely affect your health and your appearance actually so i've made videos in the past i'll link that down below so that could be something that you need to work on so also to something i wanted to point out if your eczema is localized say to your eyes like mine was it could be something with your lymph nodes so maybe these lymph nodes are not getting properly drained so i might
might have to work on my lymph nodes here um, if it's localized just to my face. So your lymphatic system is only really getting work through physical activity. Jumping is very good for that if you happen to have a trampoline or just jumping up and down, things like that. Or you can go for manual lymphatic drainage massages. Those are great too. Um, so that's just something I wanted to mention. You might want to research that. I've also done parasite and kidney cleanses. Obviously, you know, you can use unscented products, clean skincare, all that. Trust me, I tried all that in the past, but it was really only when I did the colonics regularly that my skin really cleared up and I took things out of my diet. So I would say those two are the most important. I would say if your doctor wants to prescribe you medicated creams or ointments, you know, you might have to use that just for a little bit of time to get yourself out of pain, but don't stay on that stuff very long at all because it's not good long term and it's just going to clog up your liver even more but i do understand if you have to go on that as a temporary solution but really make it your mission to get to the bottom of all this i know that was a very vague video but as mentioned i've made more specific videos about those subjects down below i'm going to link all the playlists i'll also link that andreas moritz the history of colonics video i think everyone should watch that as well as a list of books that have really helped me and the list of devil foods so sometimes you just might read something or hear something once and it just sparks something in your mind it resonates with you and hopefully it'll just make you think of things a different way and I'll just end the video by stressing that no one should suffer from eczema. So take it as a smoke sign that there is a fire within your body somewhere. So whether that's a respiratory issue, you're not breathing pop properly, you're putting something on your skin that's causing inflammation, you're eating certain foods causing inflammation, your colon is clogged, you're eating a lot of foods that produce mucus. So you almost have to look at it that your eczema is a blessing. It's telling you that something is wrong within your body. So fortunately or unfortunately, it's only up to you to really get to the root cause of that. Um, if your regular doctor can't help you much with this, I would suggest going to a naturopath. Sometimes even people that practice ancient Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic techniques of like healing the body, those people can really help you. One other thing I wanted to mention too is the circadian rhythm. So, so again, this is from one of Andreas's books, but optimally it's best if we're sleeping by 10 p.m. So those hours from 10 p.m. till 12 a.m. are essential for our body to get its beauty sleep. So this chart is taken from one of Andreas's books and maybe at a later point in time I can make a whole video dedicated to it. But essentially, if we're not sleeping between the hours of 10 p.m. till 12 a.m., our body is losing out on a lot of regenerative sleep and our liver can't detoxify properly. So he goes into this in one of his other books, but I just wanted to throw this up there. As always, thank you guys for watching. Bye.